What's up guys, this is Nick from Arch City Poker, and in today's vlog, I'm going to be continuing the Poker 101 series. Today's topic is going to be continuation betting, also known as c-betting. Many of you will already know what c-betting is, and many of you won't, and that's okay. That is why I am doing the Poker 101 series, and hopefully that will help you guys that don't really understand the terminology or these simple concepts quite yet. Now, for those of you that do know what c-betting is, many of you don't actually have a plan for when you fire out a continuation bet. Now, what is a continuation bet? First off, before we get into this, it is just basically a bet post-flop as the pre-flop raiser with the initiative. And I see many players that just fire bets on the flop and say, well, that's just a standard spot to see bet. It's a standard see bet. On the pre-flop raiser, I should be continuation betting and continuing my strength or showing my strength rather. But there are many things to consider before actually firing out a see bet. One, if you're see betting for value, do you get worse hands to call? I see many players that just fire with like mid pairs or bottom pair on a flop and just say, well, I'm just c-betting. Do you get worse hands to call? Is that going to actually be the best way to go about playing your hand? Two, if you can get worse hands to call and you fire out your c-bet, I see many players that don't think about what happens if they get raised or if they are called and then they don't plan out what they're going to do on the turn. So having a plan for when you c-bet for value is very important. Equally as important, or as important, I should say, is having a plan for when you see bet bluff. Does the flop texture represent your range well? And this might not be as important in live low stakes games as many of your opponents will only be looking at their two hole cards and not really thinking about how your range hits the flop texture. They'll just be thinking about how their cards hit the flop itself. But if you do have any thinking opponents in your game at all, it is important to start thinking about how your range hits the flop texture. For example, if you are the pre-flop early position raiser and you see bet 654, that is a flop texture that's not going to hit your range very hard. And your opponent's in position can put a lot of pressure on you at any point in the hand post flop. Now, flop textures that will hit your range well will obviously be like ace high flop textures, double painted flop textures such as king queen six or queen 10 four. These flop textures will hit your range a little bit stronger. And then your c-bet bluffs might be a little bit more successful. Now Another thing to consider when c-bet bluffing is what turn cards can I continue my bluffs on? Do I pick up equity with backdoor flush draws or backdoor straight draws? Oh, I see a lot of players that just c-bet combos on the flop that have really no hope of picking up or retaining any equity on the turn. They just bet the flop and they fire once and then they're done. And that'll work against a good amount of opponents, but a lot of opponents these days understand what a c-bet is and they understand they can't just fold every single c-bet on every flop. So you find that they will, in my experience, peel the flop with a call, and they'll often overfold the turn. And so you want to see bet combinations of hands that will pick up lots of good turn cards to barrel on. So having backdoor flush draws, backdoor straight draws, or just betting a flop texture that hits your range very well, and then basically firing any turn card for the most part where you just still have many strong hands in your range, that will make sense. So I don't want to get too complicated and too deep for you guys that are a little more novice and the ones that are watching this Poker 101 series, but you definitely just want to have a plan for when you see bet. Keep it simple. When you see bet for value, can you get worse hands to call? How are you going to react to a raise or a call from your opponent? If you're see bet bluffing, do you represent the flop pretty well with your range? And are there good turn cards for you to continue your bluff on? That should really help you become a much more efficient see better and a much more efficient player overall post flop. So if there are any questions or comments on this topic, uh, just let me know as always in the comment section and I'll try to respond to you guys as quickly as possible. Until next time, this is Nick from Arch City Poker. Take care.